So what I'm going to talk is just try to explain you the main ideas that led to the catrification of Verma modules. So this story starts around, well, the beginning of the, the, the century where uh, Schoeng and Rouquier and independently uh, Frankel, Kovanov and, and Strappel were developing ideas towards, well, categorical representation of SL2 and re categorification of representations of SL2. And all these ideas um, converge to what nowadays, nowadays we call higher representation theory. So the main idea of higher representation theory is to replace weight spaces oops, by, by categories and to define functors, well, F and E that allow to move between the, 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 the weight categories. And these functors are required to satisfy some, some version of SL2 relations, whatever that, that can, can mean. And I didn't say, but I'm saying now, I will concentrate only on SL2. I'll try to, to, to guide you through some examples using SL2. And so what, what, what I'm going to talk is only related to SL2. Okay, so we have this idea, replace weight spaces or vector spaces by a category and construct functors that act there. And they satisfy some, some relations. For us, these are the SL2 relations. So let me give you some, some, some beautiful example of, of this, 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 this construction of, the, of this idea. And this consists of looking at the Grassmannians of K planes in C to the N. So this is the N from the N, the N plus one dimensional representation of quantum SL2. So we have these, these Grassmannians as our very well known spaces take their cohomologies and set VK to be the category of graded modules over the cohomology of the Grassmannian and graded modules that are finitely generated. So this VK is going to be our two weight space. So that's going to, re to, to um, what is going to replace the weight spaces in our categorification. And these, these algebras, this cohomology of Grassmannians are positive graded rings that are one dimensional in degree zero. So they have only one incomposable projective up to isomorphism and gradient shift and one simple module up to isomorphism and gradient shift. So the Grothendieck groups are one dimensional, which is, which is a good sign because we want one dimensional weight spaces. So, to move between these, 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 these blocks, so these, these weight categories, we look at the variety of partial, of, of flags, well, a fl flag variety of k planes inside k plus one plates, everything inside some c to the n. And there are natural maps, forgetful maps, that forget either the k plane and subjects into the, 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 the Grassmannian of k plus one planes in Cn, or you forget the k plus one dimensional plane, you end up with the other Grassmannian. So these maps are natural and they induce maps in cohomology that go in the opposite direction. So the cohomology of this partial flag variety is a bimodule over the cohomologies of the two Grassmannians we have there of k planes and k plus one planes in Cn. So one good thing is that when you have bimodules, we can, can tensor modules, bimodules with, with modules to get functors. So tensoring with this bimodule defines a functor from the category of modules over the k cohomology of the k-dimensional Grassmannian to the category of modules over the cohomology of the k plus ones Grismanian, so this is our functor fk, and you can do it the other way around and define a functor we call e k a k k from v k plus one to v k. So the idea is simple: just do this all these categories one for each weight space, define these bimodules, 
which has, it's just simply uh, the cohomology of this partial flag variety and tensor with this bimodule to define the action of a functor we call F and another functor we call E that allows you to move between all these, these, these uh, weight categories. So something about these, 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 these functors, first thing they are by joint. So the functor E is left a joint and right a joint to the functor E and they satisfy some nice relations. For example, it, they send the, the, the um, unique projective incomposable to a sum of projective incomposables. So this, this symbol means that you're gonna take a direct sum of several, several times the same object with grading shifts that match quantum K plus one. So functor E has a, um, a similar behavior and these functors fit into this categorified version of the commutator. So we have EF is FE plus a bunch of copies of the identity with the, with the prescribed dimension. And if the weight is positive, if the weight is negative, the entry is just SL2, we have FE equals EF plus a bunch of copies of the identity functor. And since these functors are by a joint, so they induce an action on the Grothendieck group. And so the Grothendieck group of this category is a, category, is, is, um, a module over SL2, which is isomorphic to the irreducible module of dimension n plus one. Okay, so this is somehow an easy construction of this, this two representation of SL2. Uh, but there are some, some things behind the, all this construction. For, for example, this, this categorification is essentially unique. Well, in a sense, I will not go into, I cannot explain, but it's called strong categorification by, by, by um, Schwang and Rukier. And if, if we analyze the properties of this categorification, we can give a definition of a two representation of SL2 that contains some, 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 some ingredients. For example, weight decomposition. So we sum over all weights, F and E. So we have an adjunction between uh, the functor F and FE and the functor E. We have a direct sum decomposition. So this is just the commutator and we have an ELEC action on FN. I will explain a bit more about this algebra before, but it's an algebra th that acts on, on powers of functor F or functor E, which is similar. Um, that is very important in proving that this action is essentially unique. And it allows you to control in some sense, the higher uh, structure of this categorification. So one thing that, that uh, a remark here is that these properties imply that EF is also an adjoint pair. So by adjointness of functors, it's a consequence of the relations. On the other side, if you have, you fix, if you fix a highest weight, so a block on which functor E acts as zero, the conditions imply that we have a lowest weight block as well. So there's a power of F will act as zero. So all representations coming from these definition are integrable. So my motivation in Reguaz a couple of some, some a few years ago was to extend this contraction to Catrify a Verma module. Um, so if you want to Catrify a Verma module, you want weight decomposition, you want highest weight, in some sense, we will always also want a, an ELEC action, so to have some control under the higher structure, but a junction seems a bit normal and we have to get rid of one of the conditions. Otherwise, we will not get refire from a module. So having this in mind, we can start to look more closely to what we have to do and what we can do. So the idea is, as I said, is, 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 is the same as before. So define categories one for each weight space and construct functors that allow you to move between these categories. 
So I wrote here, these quantities here, I just do coefficients, so f sent this k basis vector to the k plus one's basis vector with coefficients k plus one and e acts well by multiplication by this, this, this symbol that is a rational function. So one important thing, one thing that was important to us is to look at this rational function as a power series. And now, if you see this as a power series, you need in some sense to work with objects with infinite resolutions. And we need notions of convergence and lots of technicalities. So usually when you do lead Grotten groups, we have to be very careful with, when working with these sort of objects, not to, 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 to fall in, 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 in Grotten groups that are zero. Okay, so having these things in mind, we can do a wish list. So we want to imitate Schwann Rouquet, Frankel Kovanov and Stroppel. So the idea is to find nice, Bigraded rings, bigraded because we have two parameters, Q and lambda, with one dimension Grotten D groups, and some bimodules, omega k, k plus one, such that, well, this bimodule, bimodules are free over omega k and over omega k plus one, but as a module over omega k plus one, we want it to, want it to be of graded rank k plus one. So if you have in mind what Shuangi Hokia did, so in passing from MK to MK plus one, we have some sense to multiply by quantum K plus one. So this is why, why, why you have, you want this dimension. And as an omega K module, you need to have something with graded rank, this rational function. So infinite objects with infinite resolutions or infinite direct sums or something of this sort. Because you want to have this rank for an object. Moreover, we went SL2, right? So these guys would be, we play the role of E and F and um, you want them to satisfy some version of the commutator relation, which we now, we know that it cannot be a direct sum decomposition as I showed you before. Okay, so let's do something more precise. Let's answer this, this, this wish list. So you're going from Vn to some Verma module, which is infinite dimensional. So the first thing we are tempted to do is to look at Guzmanians inside C infinity and the same for the partial flag manifold. So these cohomologies are very easy, just are just free polynomial rings generated by, by by chain classes. Uh, if you replace these cohomologies into their construction, you don't give the right answer. So they don't satisfy our wish list, principally because the cohomology of the infinite partial flag variety as a module over to cohomology of the Grismanian of K planes in, in infinity, in C infinity, does not have the right dimension. Moreover, this is singly graded. So you never end up with, with this Verma module. But we can use this in our favor. So uh, one notice that we know that the inclusions of the finite dimension Grossmannian into the infinite dimension Grossmannian gives an action of the cohomology of the infinite Grossmannian on the cohomology of the finite dimension of Grossmannian. So we can take a resolution of HK, cohomology of the finite dimension Grossmannian as a module over the cohomology of the infinite dimension Grossmannian, which is just a polynomial ring, right? So how does it work? So let me just give you very quickly the example for K equals one. So the, this cohomology is very easy. So it's Q of X mod X to the N. And there's a very, very easy resolution as a module over the polynomial ring in one variable, so Q of X, and the map is just multiplication by X to the N. So it's clearly a, the resolution of, of the cohomology of this discourse manian. And we can turn this around. And instead of working with the resolution, we can turn this into a DG algebra. So in our example, so our algebra would be Q of X plus another gen, 
variable that I call omega, which corresponds to this guy. So this is in cohomological degree one and a differential and the differential sets omega to x to the n and everything else to zero. So in this short example, it's clear. Omega squared zero. Uh, omega square squares to zero, sorry, yes. Thanks, Grigor. Yo, it's anti-symmetric, so yeah, it's odd. Thanks. Um, so it's clear from this example that this DG algebra has a cohomology isomorphic to the cohomology of the finite dimension Grassmannian. So this is more general. So if you do this in generality, you're gonna have quasi-isomorphisms between our DG algebras and cohomologies of finite dimension Grassmannians uh, with zero differential. And the same for, for the, the partial flag variety. Okay, good. So now we have cohomological grading. We have two parameters. We have something which is in some sense infinite. So let's see what, 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 what this gives us. So this, these algebras, omega k, omega k plus one are just tensor products of the cohomology of the infinite Grassmannian. So a free part with an exterior algebra. And when, when there's no differential can add an, an extra grading. But the main result is that these algebras omega k, e omega k, k plus one satisfy our wish list. So they have the right dimensions. Moreover, they fit into a short exact sequence of bimodules. So here you have, uh, here you have uh, F E applied to the vector MK, MK. You have EF applied to the vector MK. Here you have just, just this rational function multiplying the vector MK. So on the Grotten Dick group, this gives you the commutator. Good. So this is good news. Let's write everything here in terms of Fs and Es. So let's do it more carefully. So we have to define the categorification of the weight space. So this, this, this category, so let's look at modules over omega k that are locally finite dimensional and are cone bounded. What does that mean? It means that, well, the algebras are bigraded and we ask the modules, the, the, um, the, the bigrading to fit into a cone. This is required to have convergence of the Grotten D group. Uh, so take the derived category of these guys and look inside the bounded derived category of these guys and look inside the, 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 um, the su full subcategory generated by compact objects. So do the same as Shuangi Rukier and Frankel, Kovanov, and Stroppel define functors F and E exactly the same way. And the good news is that these functors are exact. They form an adjoint pair. They are not by a joint. So there's no map implying the other, the, other, the other adjunction. The map doesn't exist in this category. The Nilek algebra acts on powers of F and we have a quasi isomorphism of cones. So the cone of a map from Fe to EF is isomorphic to this infinite direct sum. So cones decat we find two differences. So this is just the commutator of E and F. And this is just coefficient of the identity. So this is a categorification of the Verma module. So let me write this, write it more precisely. Let me state it. So we take the sum of all these weight spaces, the sum of all Fs, all Es. So we have an action of quantum SL2 on the Grotten D group of this category, which is isomorphic to the Verma module. So you have to be careful with this Grotten D group. So this is called what we Gregoire call asymptotic Grotten D group. So it's a technology that Gregoire developed to deal with this case with infinite resolutions and by gradings fitting these, these our conditions. Okay, so this categorifies Verma module. So we're introducing the differentials. So since we have this quasi isomorphism of algebras, we get on the nose the original construction 
of Zhuang Rukier, Franco Kovanov, and Stropel. And one, one interesting thing is that we, if we look at the um, exact sequence of bimodules, the short exact sequence of bimodules, now they have a differential. So it's a short exact sequence of complexes inducing, well, a long exact sequence in homology. The homologies we, can, we already know. So from this exact sequence of bimodules, we can recover both direct sum decompositions of Schwang, Rukier, Frankel, Kovanov, and Stropel. The, both of them in the same, in the same long exact sequence. And our action of the Nilek algebra descends to the known action. Okay, now, if you want to generalize this, looking at partial flag varieties, my make things hard to generalize to other, other Lie algebras. So this is why, why we look at Nilek algebras. So the Nilek algebra that I mentioned before is generated by an endomorphism of F and an endomorphism of F square that satisfies some relations, though it has a diagrammatic description in terms of braid-like diagrams with some, some, some strands. And they have a very interesting quotient called the cyclotomic quotient, where we kill all diagrams that have, that have n dots on the first strand. And this cyclotomic Nilek algebra is modit equivalent to the cohomology of the finite dimension Grossmannian. So it's not surprising that they also categorize Vn, the reducible Vn. So to define the action of F and E, so we note that adding a strand to the right of the diagram gives rise, originates two functors, induction and restriction. We call one F, the other one E, and it's not very hard to check that they satisfy the SL2 relations in all the other relations introduced before. So by jointness, direct sum decomposition, and so on. So the idea now to generalize, because we know how to get refi uh, irreducibles for other, other Lie algebras, is to do exactly the here, exactly the same thing we did with the with the Grossmannians. So it's to look at the cyclotomic Nilek algebra as a module over the original Nilek algebra to give DGAs, which is just Nilek with an extra generator, a floating dot that satisfies two relations, so it's too potent, and it satisfies this different exchange relation. So omega, um, this is omega from, from the example before, the differential sends the floating dot to n dots on the first strand and everything else to zero. And a bit of work, it's not immediate outside of cohomological degree zero, is that this algebra is quasi isomorphic to the cyclotomic Nilek algebra with zero differential. Moreover, this algebra acts on powers of F. So this is F from the Verma. So we do still have one minute to, to explain. So let, okay, uh, so where did I stop? Because I didn't see. When you said you had a minute. <laughs> um, so when, when, when did I say that? So keep, oh, it was in the beginning, right? <laughs> no, keep going. Okay, so, so. The floating dots, I think, was the last thing. Okay, floating dots. Okay, here they are. So we, we did GNNs, we, we do exactly the same thing with, with uh, cyclotomic Nilek algebra and Nilek algebra to get a DG algebra we call A. And this A is just Nilek, well, the free part, right? It's the free part with a, another generator, a floating dot. This is what I called omega in the example I did, I, 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 I wrote before. And well, it's nilpotent as Gregoire pointed out and it satisfies these exchange relations, relation, and the differential access zero everywhere on Nilek except, except on the floating dot. So it sends the floating dot to n usual Nilek dots on the first strand. So we have to have this. There's no other solution if you want to, 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 to end up in, in cyclotomic Nilek algebra, right? So this is easy to see that in degree zero, the cohomology of this DG algebra is 
don't make me lack, it is less obvious to prove that it is zero everywhere else, so that we have this 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 quasi isomorphism. So, to define action of functors, so we do the same as as with Mille, uh, cyclotomic Millac. So we add a strand at the left or at the right of a diagram, and this defines a, an induction functor we call F. We call E to its right adjoint. So the functors are exact, and by definition, F E is an adjoint pair. We define carification of weight spaces as before, the same sort of modules, but instead of the, 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 the um, omegas, we use these algebras A K. And without many su much surprise, since we already knew this from, from before, this gives you a carification of, of, of the Verma module. Um, this does not give you the, 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 the same basis. So this gives you the F basis, where F always acts with a coefficient is always one, just send V1 to V2 to V3 and so on. All, all the coefficients are passed to the action of E. Okay, uh, so this can be done with other cyclotomic KLR or WKLR algebras, which are also cyclotomic algebras. So we do the, the, the same, exactly the same procedure to get DG, DG algebras that we can use to calcify, well, now we can DGNNs, we have a lot of simple roots, so we can just DGNNs with respect to some, some, some simple roots. So this gives you a characterification of parabolic formal modules, or in the case of WKLR algebras of tensor products of parabolic vermas and several integrable modules. So Grégoire will explain you this, this uh, a bit further. And the last message, the last result is that in type A, as in the case of, of, of KLR algebras in type A, all these algebras are versions of hack algebras. So the GNNs uh, higher level as maximal and Stroppel called cycle uh, hack algebras. And the, just to say to thank you, I will show you the last slide where I give a lot of things, well, several things I know that are written in, in, in green here that I know what we have done with, with several people and a lot of things in, in black that I don't know. So thank you for listening. Thank you. Should we take a, a few quick questions before we change speaker? Or I guess we have. So is it always an extra exterior algebra that gets tossed in? in the yes. Or is it, okay. Yes, well, in our case, so this is similar to what people were doing. I found this recently in, in the, the late 70s in rational homotopy theory. They were looking at cohomology of spaces and they were trying to write these cohomology rings as DG algebras. So to find DG algebra models for topological spaces, for spaces. They can, they can even, if you give, some, give them some of these algebras, well, they have to be um, uh, super commutative. So polynomials and, and exterior algebras. And they, they give, you, you give these guys one of these algebras and they construct your topological spaces for you, which is the homology, the cohomology is the cohomology of this DG algebra. What, for the KRR, it's more complicated. You don't have yeah, like yeah, a yeah, free resolution. It's not, it's not as uh, commutative. I meant you give them a super commutative DG algebra, like the one coming from the cohomology of the Grismanians, and they construct your space. Yes. Can I just ask briefly? I didn't, not... ask, I, I didn't understand. Oh, sorry. Um, so I. I have a rough picture of what the, uni the, the, the this kind of universal Verma module is. Yes. But you said that when you kind of reintroduce um, something, then the integrable representation pops out. Yes. And I didn't understand what, how that happened. So you have this, uh, let me see where, where, where it is. Uh, here. So when you introduce the differentials, the algebras, so these, these, these algebras, these rings, omega k's that we were using to, to um, construct 
the, the, the categorified Verma module get quasi isomorphic to the cohomologies of, of the finite dimensional Riemannian. The thing that categorifies the Verma has no differential? You're like viewing it without the differential? Yes, yes. So here, to categorify the Verma, we don't have any differential. You see here you have omega k with zero differential. The differential... Do you know about to pre-graded Humphrey homology? So if, if you look, look at the uh, unknot, Basically, that's the first white space of the, uh, the second white space of the Verma. And you can introduce this differential d n and send the accelerator thing to x to the n if you specialize the lambda grading somehow to, to q n. And, and that's basically the differential that you can uh, define everywhere. And you get the integrable module, which is linked related to SLN homology if you want. Okay. Yeah. With, with our differential, everything beyond the lowest weight is zero, is, is, is contractible. So this big Verma module, when we throw in, we uh, add the differential, it collapses into a finite dimension representation. So it's somehow, we can see that as a, a projection of the universal Verma module into a, onto a, a simple irreducible finite dimensional representation. But to do Verma, you have to, throw away the differential, otherwise everything will shrink. I think Stefan has a question. He was raising his hand. Yeah. Yes, th thank you. Uh, so, so you have a theory of uh, simple modules and finite dimensional representations and, uh, and uh, submodule, uh, maximal submodule, uh, simple quotient for Verma module, everything goes uh, uh, yes. as planned. Is there a notion of universal enveloping uh, algebra for those things because oh, you can thing? compose the functors and uh, or uh, or the notion of uh, annihilator of a uh, verma module so we saw a bit about uh, a clarification of the universal enveloping algebra that would, would would act would act on 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 on, a, on this clarified verma module and we, we didn't we didn't succeed so we tried some things and things get technical. So Gregoire tried a, a bit more than me. Maybe he can give you some, some, some more information. But it, well, this is one of the questions, the things I, I, I put here. So the higher structure. So what, 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 what X, what is the two category that acts on the two Verma? Because you have a category of, of, we have objects, all these blocks, categorified with space. We have one morphisms, functors, and then you have natural transformations of functors. We, the only thing we know is that the, the um, algebra AN, so the, 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 the enhanced NILAC algebra acts there. And everything else gets, gets, gets complicated, gets tough. So re related to that, so the point is that the usual, say, LADA SL2 doesn't act because ENF. No, it doesn't. Lada, no, no. But you know that it acts after imposing the differential and taking yes. the Exactly. Is that, is there exactly. some natural lift of that statement to some extra structure? like? A junction up to differential. Does is this known? Is there anything like this? Uh, I think one of the issue is that the SL two commutator is not like a direct sum anymore. So you, you, one of the technicality is that you directly need to work with like triangulated category and stuff like that, and 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 you really require some kind of isomorphism of mapping cone. Yeah. which could be non-trivial to get uh, yeah. by this generic generation diagrammatic categories. We have the same problem though with PDG stuff, right? So. Yes. yes. Yeah. So if, let me add you, if, if in some sense, functors F and E become by a joint, then giving a highest weight, it's the same as giving a lowest weight. So this is this is the, we can do this in, in playing a bit with with Aaron Aaron Lauder's uh, two SL two. Just try to tunnel these these bubbles from the highest weight to the lowest weight vector, and having a, um, a highest weight implies a lowest weight. Sorry, it's only SL two. It's only SL two that you have. No, can, we can have you? all. all all symmetrizable Katsumodi. Oh, nice. 
mm -hmm. and tensor products. So Gregoire will tell you about this in, in a few minutes. Very nice. I, I wanted only to give you the background, all the, 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 the idea, how to get there. I will only speak about SLP here, Gregoire. Maybe we should. Um, yeah, I, I'm not co-host, so I cannot share my screen yet. Okay, so I should stop here. Is there a, is there a quantum center? Quantum center? Uh, well, there's, you know, there's, there's a cat for SL2, there's a catrification of the, um, the, the Casimir. And the Casimir. I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't succeed in acti with acting with this Casimir, catrified Casimir, on the two Verma module. So mm -hmm. maybe there's something different. Uh, basically because the catrification of the, 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 the center for SL2, the Casimir, uses maps that we don't have. So it's the adjunction in the other direction, which we don't have in our category. So I, I don't know how the Casimir reacts on this two Verma module. So I'm talking about this catrification by Belyakov, uh, Air, Lauda and Kovanov. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks again. Let's uh, nice. maybe clap while Gregoire put on his uh, screen. <laughs> okay, I will stop, stop share. That's it. No. Two Verma, two. Yeah. So um, I would like to thank uh, the organizer for giving me the opportunity to talk about uh, my work. Uh, so I will continue uh, where Pedro uh, stopped. And uh, what I will talk about is joint work with uh, Benjamin Dupont, Abel Lacaban, and of course, Pedro Bach. Uh, and so I, I want to, to go back a bit to, to the start of Petro talk. And, and okay, so why should we care about Verma module and anti categorification? And of course, um, there's a lot of possible answers to this question, especially for Verma module. These are very, very important objects. But because I'm kind of a topologist, my motivation will be low dimensional topology. And, and of course, for these quantum groups are precious um, objects because they are um, non commutative, non co commutative of algebra. So uh, it means that the category of representation are monoidal. You can act on tensor product by using the commutification. And more than that, if you are a bit careful, uh, you can make them braided. So it means that basically you have an action of the braid group on a uh, tensor product of, of representation of quantum groups. And, and because uh, these quantum groups are not commutative nor co-commutative, this uh, action of the braid group is not trivial. So you really have some interesting 3D information there. Um, and also, this category of representation is uh, dual, so you have evaluation and co-evaluation morphism. And, and basically, if, if you choose your representation to be finite dimensional or more generally integrable, um, you can construct polynomial link invariant, uh, basically by just writing your knot as a composition of a cup and cap given by the, the evaluation and co-evaluation and by braiding. Uh, and so this was done by uh, Rishtikin and, and Tirolev. And in particular, if you take uh, V to be the fundamental representation of quantum SL2, and you look at the endomorphism algebra of a bunch of tensor product of uh, this fundamental representation, you get the well-known temporary leap algebra of type A, which allow you to compute the joint polynomial. So it is a very famous um, link invariant. And the idea of categorification is that you is to, to categorify this picture somehow. And so this was done by Webster. So what he did, uh, based on the work of many people, is to construct uh, some algebra that we call KL and W for Kovanov, um, Loda, Rukier. And the W is supposed to be weighted. But I guess we could also say that it's for Webster. Uh, and so you look at like, a category of, um, of modules of this, this algebra. And um, Webster constructed some higher version of the evaluation, co-evaluation, and, and, and braiding map as functor uh, over this category of representation. And you can use them to build link homology. And in particular, if you do that for the, the finite representation of SL2, you get uh, Kovanov homology, which is a well-known categorification of the joint polynomial. But wait, OK, this is somewhat classical. Where are the Verma modules there? 
So the idea is that we can try to do similar stuff with Verma module. Uh, the first thing that we can do is to take um, generic Verma module. So generic means that the highest weight is just like a, a formal variable. So that's the, the Verma module that Pedro told you about. Um, and you can consider the endomorphism ring of um, a tensor product of one copy of the Verma module and a bunch of copy of the fundamental representation of quantum SL2. And if you do that, uh, it appears that you get uh, an algebra that is called the Blob algebra. Uh, and this Blob algebra was introduced by Martin and Sauler, and it is a cushion of the temporary Lie algebra of type B. And so this was uh, observed by Diorra, Reher, and Zank in the projective case, and uh, like a and Vaj um, extended it to the generic case. Uh, okay, and I know the thing is because um, you have this type B algebra thing, it appears that you can construct also uh, invariant of link, but in the annulus this time. And the intuition here is what it is that each copy of a fundamental representation of quantum SL2 somehow gives you a strength of your link. Uh, but then what you can also do is apply twice the, the braiding on the first two terms. And what it will what it will do is it will take your strength and go around the verma somehow. And so you can think of the identity of the verma as the puncture in your annulus. Uh, uh, and that's it. That gives you an uh, invariant of link uh, as, a two parent, as a two variable polynomial, where the second variable is your generic highest weight. And so, of course, uh, first thing that we could try to do is categorify like this. And it appears that it works. So uh, with, uh, with Abel and Pedro, we gave a categorization of this tensor product of a Verma and multiple um, integrable representation, uh, also by using some DG version of scalar W algebra. So basically, we did the same thing uh, as, as, as Pedro explained to you for the, the cyclotomic nil hacker, but instead of using cyclotomic nil hacker, you, you, you used cyclotomic scalar W algebra. Uh, and then, uh, by a similar setup as uh, Webster did to construct higher version of evaluation, co-evaluation, and braiding, we can construct higher version of the intertwiners that compose the Blob algebra. Um, and so we did it, basically. And um, what we expect is that in the future it gives a uh, annular link homology, and we actually think that it is related to um, annular Kovanov homology. So that's one thing that we can do. What else? Wait, there is an, another nice result that I know about Verma model. And the idea is this time to take a tensor product of multiple generic Verma model and look at the action of the bread group on this. And because um, this action is given by intertwiner, what you can do is restrict, restrict to weight spaces of your tensor product. So of course, the first weight spaces is, uh, is one dimensional, so it's not very, very interesting. But if you go to the second white spaces, you get something that is like n-dimensional for the number of copy of, of your Verma. And um, if you restrict a bit more and you look at the highest white spaces, so you look at the, so the second white space and you look at all the elements that are killed by E. Um, and, and you can also do it because the bread group acts like intertwiners. And it appears that the representation of the bread group you get coincides with the bureau representation, which is a well-known representation of the bread group. Uh, but it is a one parameter, and the parameter of the bureau coincide up to reparameterization with the um, generic highest weight of the Verma. And then you can do that also on the third highest weight space, and then you get uh, Lorentz Kramer Bigelow, which is also a famous representation of the bread group, and it is even a faithful one. And this time, the two parameters up to reparameterization coincide with the quantum Q and with the generic highest weight. Uh, and then again, you can, you can continue and restrict to any uh, highest weight space and, and I, I think in general it coincide with uh, the generalized Lorentz uh, bread group representation. And so now we, can, we could try to categorify this and it appears that it also works. So with, uh, with Benjamin, uh, we give a categorification of the, ten, of the tensor product of multiple Verma module. And again, by using a similar setup as Webster, we can construct a, a bread group action. And in particular, by restricting to uh, sub white spaces, we can categorify Burrow and Laurent Kramer Bigelow as a two parameter uh, representation. So, this is still a work in progress. So, actually, we haven't really checked all the data for the, in general for the bread group action, but um, for the first white spaces, we have done it in details and it works. 
And so now um, what I want to do is give you some um, explanation about how to do that more precisely. And so I want to explain to you uh, first for a world premiere how to do categorification of tensor product, but for all cases. So for this, we should take, uh, we should first fix a string of highest weights, highest SL2 weights. So uh, these are my mu, mu i, and each one of them could be either dominant integral or generic. And so it means that I will categorify a tensor product, uh, and each time mu i is dominant integral, it's, uh, the tensor factor is an integrable module, so a finite dimensional SL2 module, irreducible SL2 module. Uh, and when it is generic, it's a copy of the generic Verma module. So I fix this, and then I can construct my DGKRW algebra, and I do it by generator and relation. So um, I can see, uh, uh, and, and my generator are in form of, uh, of diagrams. So I consider a um, bread-like diagram where I have R correct strengths, so one for each uh, weight, so one for each tensor factor, and uh, they are labeled by the, by the weights, of course. And I want to draw them in red uh, when the weight is dominant integral, so as Webster, basically, and in blue when it is uh, for generic. Uh, so that this is just a mnemonic uh, color. And then I put B black strength, and this black strength can cross other strengths and carry dots. And basically the number of black strength will tell you in which weight space you are. So the more black strength you have, the lower in weights you are. And then I have some condition. Um, and then I also have a condition that the first trend should be on the left, should be always colored. Uh, so if you know a bit about um, KW algebra, you usually have this um, violating condition that say that if you have a black strand on the left, then uh, it is zero. But somehow this is a cyclotomic condition and I don't want cyclotomic condition because I want to work with DG enhancement. And so I just ask that there are no black strands on the left. And finally, I have um, another generator, and it is that you can uh, nail a black strand on the uh, leftmost colored strand. And these are if you want the floating dot of Pedro. So if you have just one, um, if you have just one colored strand, and only black strand, then it is the the, the, the DG nil Heck algebra that Pedro told you about. And then we impose some relation on this algebra. So we consider everything up to bread-like planar isotopy, so we can move things around vertically, basically. You impose the nil hecker relation on the black strands, and then you have some um, kind of Rydomarster 2 type relation for colored strands. Uh, and so this is the usual one for um, Webster algebra. And basically it tells you that um, when you have too many uh, black strands on the right of uh, a red strand, you can factorize to one where you have less black strand and, and more black strand uh, on, on the left. And, and this will control you the number of projective modules. And so this, will, this is what will tell you that somehow you are categorifying um, a tensor factor which is finite dimensional. And for the Verma strand, uh, you just say it's zero because you don't want to have this condition because you want to be, because Verma modular infinite dimensional. So you can have as many black strand somehow on the, on the right of it. And then you have similar relation of Rydomaster master three and, and some dot sliding. And finally, you have the nail relation, which are exactly the, the relation that Pedro showed you for the, the floating dots, uh, except this one that you need to add because it was implicit in the diagrammatic picture of Pedro. Okay. And finally, we endow this algebra with a Z times Z2 grading. So the first grading is cohomological because we want um, DG, DG algebra, and then the by grading is, is quantum, so that is a Q and lambda grading of, of Pedro. And so the nail is the only one that is like in cohomological degree one, because it's the floating dot basically. And finally, you impose a differential that is either trivial if the first trend is Verma, so if it is blue, um, or the or it send the nail to uh, the number of dots corresponding with the, the first weight if it is integral. So um, you can already observe that if you have if all your weights are um, integral, then what you have is basically um, usual uh, KNW algebra where the uh, cyclotomic condition has been DG enhanced by by this relation, and so you get a, a quasi and then you get something quasi isomorphic to usual. Uh, Webster algebra. Um, all right. 
So then what you can do is the usual thing. So you have um, a categorical action of quantum SL2 by induction and restriction along the map that had a uh, black strand on the right. Um, again, you have this isomorphism of cone that categorified the uh, um, SL2 commutator relation. And I just want to say something that is quite maybe a bit funny is that if all your um, weights are integral, then uh, the map here is not trivial. But if you have one blue strand, then it is trivial. And so uh, we have like the direction that Pedro uh, showed you basically. Um, okay, and then you can uh, look at the, the Grotondi group of the derived category of the suitably defined derived category of DG module over this DG algebra, and they categorify the tensor product of uh, that you that you wanted basically. Um, and I also want to mention something else about this um, this derived category is that they have a nice structure there, what uh, I would call triangulated standardly stratified. So um, usually you have this notion of standardly stratified category for, for abelian category that is some kind of generalization of highest weight categories. And basically it means that um, you have this uh, family of, uh, of, of standard module uh, that come with some pre-order and the projective modules are, have are also pre-ordered um, and have a filtration with proposition factor given by the standard module uh, in, in lower holder and it'll tell you a lot about the, the structure of the category. And here you have something similar between the derived category and so you need to replace filtration by finite iterative extension, basically. And also um, you have some, something that uh, people call a standardization functor that categorify the inclusion of the categorification of the tensor factor into the tensor product. So it's, it's just nice structure that you want to have on category fight and soft product that's just the point of, of, of this. Okay and so now we want to use this categorification to um, to categorify the blob algebra and Lorentz Kramer bigger representation and so on and so let me um, show you what the blob algebra looks like. Well you can describe it um, also by generator in relation as a diagrammatic algebra generated by these guys. So these are like, if you want the, the type A temporarily algebra generator, and then you have some type B Hecke generator that I draw at this, uh, this picture. And you have some relation, the usual type A temporarily uh, bubble relation. You have a type B temporarily um, bubble relation. And finally, some quadratic relation for the, the Hecke generator. And you do everything up to planar I dot of A. Uh, and so we want to categorify that. So of course we should choose the, um, the way that categorified as a product of a verma with multiple integrable module because we know that the blob algebra is endomorphism algebra of this guy. And so we choose these colors basically from my TGKW algebra. And then uh, as Webster, we can define by module generated by some pictures. And so you simply act by concatenation of diagram on, on the top and bottom and you impose some uh, uh, ad hoc relation. And um, it is by module are not, um, not configured on a left, uh, left or right module. And so you need to take um, the right tensor product. And, and if you do that, you get a uh, um, functor on the derived category that categorify uh, the, the co-evaluation and evaluation functors, the map. So this corresponds to the, this, this guy. And then you can do something similar for the, the type B hack generator, except that we know that it, which, which should coincide with some double braiding. And so you just define a bimodule diagrammatically with some relation and you take the right tensor of product. And then what you can do is show that these functors intertwine with the categorical action. So if you want with the induction restriction functor uh, that at a black strand on the right, and then we can show that we have quasi isomorphism of DG functor between all these guys that lift uh, my relation of the block algebra to the categorical setting. But I want to point out that this is quite difficult to do because we work with a derived funct with the, the derived tensor product. So somehow what you want to do is compute um, coffee brand replacement as left module, but then you are messing, messing your, uh, you, you are basically uh, destroying your action on the right. So you need to lift it into an infinity setting which can be quite um, annoying. 
So usually you try to, to, to find some quasi isomorphic replacement and stuff like that. Uh, but at the end of the day, for one of the relations, we really had to compute some infinitive stuff, which was kind of a nightmare. But still, it's doable. So that's kind of nice. Uh, and then you can, what you can do is define some DG category generated by, by this DG functor and it's Groton, we can show that this Groton degroup is really the blob algebra. So you, do, you don't have simply like an action of the blob algebra, you really have a categorification of the blob algebra. And um, I think I'm almost out of time, but so I just want to quickly go through the, the case with multiple verma. So this time you take all blue strands. And again, um, basically as Webster, you can define some um, braiding by module, by the diagrams with some relation. And you do the right answer product. Uh, there's just one issue here is that if you try to braid the first two strands, uh, the first two blue strands, this diagram does not exist because I do not allow a black strand on the left, if you remember. And so it means that you need to replace this condition by a DG enhancement of it. Uh, meaning that you need to add a new generator and basically it's a nail on the breeding, uh, which come with a differential. So this differential is really like the DG enhancement of this guy, except that if you do that, you will construct certain higher homology. So you need to go on and go on and go on and add a collection of generator where you can nail as many black strands on it with some quite complicated differential that appear. Because if you see that if you apply your differential here, this is zero. So this should be the in homology, basically. Uh, and so, okay, we can do that. And you do, like I said, you take the right tensor product. And for the moment, you are working to show that it has all the properties that we want. So it should be like an auto equivalence. It should intertwine the categorical action. So this one is easy. And then you should respect some categorical version of the bread group uh, or relation. And you also want to show higher coherence relation, actually. So we are still working on this. But for sure, we can restrict to white spaces and then get categorification of Bureau and Lord Scrummer. And basically we know that we have the right answer because in this case we can compute explicit coffee brand replacement on the left for our braiding functor that looks like this. And you can check that um, it, it acts on the Groton group as the R matrix would act basically. Uh, so this is for the second white space. If, if you go to the third white space, things get a bit more ugly and then it's bigger and bigger of course. And you have uh, some truncated uh, coffee brand replacement if you braid the first, two first strands of course. And I think I'm out of time, so I will uh, finish on this uh, kind of beautiful picture. Thanks. Do we have some questions? I have many, but. <laughs> Stefan, Stefan, you want to go first? Yeah. The second weight space means you are tensoring each time with a fundamental representation and you detect? Uh, second weight space means, I mean, I mean, the, the, um, the, you are, te you are tensoring the, the highest weight space. So when yeah. you act with F, you arrive in the second weight space. That's what I mean. Yeah, but that's what you are doing. You, you are tensoring with a very small representation, with a fundamental representation, and then you are reading the relations out of that, right? You are reading no. the action and the relations, no? It's just you're in Verma tensor Verma and you apply, or Verma tensor Verma tensor Verma and you apply F twice. Okay. Um, so in, in parallel with uh, what was happening in, in Pedro's talk, you know, you define this differential so that the differential of a nail on a blue strand is zero, but yeah. presumably there's some differential you can turn on if you wanted to, so that the differential on a blue strand was n dots, and then you'd end up becoming quasi-isomorphic to the finite Webster thing. Yeah. So somehow there's just one issue here is that if you have a Verma module um, in the middle of your tensor product, I don't know how to get from that to the integrable case. Right, and you shouldn't be able to. <laughs> so but, but if you just had... When you have like one on, on the left. Right, but, but, it, but if you have one on the left and who knows what else on the right? I mean, is there a differential you can turn on just on that one on the left that turns the one on the left into a finite? Yeah, I mean, that, 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 
that, that's the, 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 the formula here, basically. Right. And now, is there a differential you can turn on to the first two on the left that would give you a tensor product of two finite ones? So, you mean, what you, you really want, like, right? And then you go to two integrable. That's what you want to do. Yeah. Well, I mean, because if you think about what you, know, what you really want is you've got the annulus and you, you've made a nice yeah. little thing for the annulus. And you could probably make the boundary of the annulus a little thicker by having more than one blue thing on the left if you wanted. Um, but you, you know, one thing, you know, the point is that uh, things on the disk are a module over things on the annulus because you can plug them into the middle of the annulus. Uh, and that's kind of like taking the blue strand and turning it red. Um, the issue here, to, 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 um, the issue here is that the name is only on the left colored strand. Well, yes. So on, on, on the, the other colored strand, I just impose the, the this relation, you know. But what exists a right. DG enhancement of all these relations, but then you get this very big, very ugly diagrammatic algebra where you don't have like right master moves basically. So it's, it, it, it is like a nightmare. I don't know how to compute like a basis or anything. I can show you if you want the picture. You definitely want to it, Mr. Moves. I'm, I'm with you there. Um, okay, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about this later. This is interesting. Yeah. Other questions? Just briefly, so there's another yeah. um, categorification of the Lawrence Kramer Bigelow representation via a, um, a cell quotient of Zergel bimodules. Like you look at the cell quotient corresponding to the partition n minus 2, 2. So I, I, I read somewhere that there should be like a connection between Zergel bimodule and Lawrence Kramer Bigelow, but I, I don't really know. Um, how it works. I couldn't find like a reference about this. So if no one, please send it to me. Uh, I don't know, because I mean, for, for Bureau, you had some, uh, some connection, of course, but for Lawrence Kammer Bigelow, I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of simple in that the, so the not like the, the normal Lawrence Kramer Bigelow representation is, um, the associated to the representation of the Hecker algebra that corresponds to the partition n minus two two. Mm -hmm. So that's a representation of the symmetric group, which you can then quantize to get a representation of the Hecker algebra, which then gives you this Lorentz Kramer Bigelow representation of the. Pedro has probably already secretly proved these things are the same, right? Because this factors through the sure quotient of the Hecker category. You know, th this factors through a quotient of the Hecker category, which maps to this uh, sure category of Mackay Stosich Vaz, which, which almost certainly acts on this thing that they're doing here. Maybe. I had forgotten about that, but yeah, okay. Yeah. I was, yeah, basically, I just wanted to know if these are. If these are the same or roughly the same, or I don't know. <laughs> More comments or questions? The good, the good thing about you know this online format is that. You can, the question session is sort of like open-ended because when people are tired of it, they just sort of <laughs> press end. So, <clears throat> but uh, we should probably also get some, maybe call it tea before the next session. Are there final question or? I, I can go forever, but you might as well stop the recording and we can just blather. <laughs>